Good morning, folks. That large plasma filament we've watched for days is now just about gone. It departed the Earth-facing disk and is headed for the backside. Top space weather story this morning is elevated density readings in the solar wind. Way elevated. This is ramping geomagnetic energy and beating down the electron fluctuations in near-Earth space. Not far behind in importance is the appearance of a new sunspot group developing quickly on the southern hemisphere. She's born on the departing half of the disk, so she's unlikely to be geo-effective, but this does put a brief hold on our expected sunspot number trough. Magnetogram appears to show us that this new group is beta but lacking any real complexity along with no magnetic mixing in the other Earth-facing sunspots. With that, we've got a not-so-unexpected decline in solar flaring. The thin positive coronal hole up north had its earth-facing time and is now departing as well. Won't be long before the coronal fields let the next opening face earth. Down south, negative, and set to again change up the near-earth magnetic influence. We'll quickly eye the plasma filaments currently on the disk since the sunspots appear less of an eruption threat. Got one facing earth down south as well. To follow up an above average earthquake in Aruba two nights ago. Colombia is taking an uptick as well. We've also got a small swarm developing in Greece that peaks above average for the region. On October 8th, in four days, we've got the first of two eclipses this month, visible for most of the Americas and the Far East, a total lunar eclipse. Now, Just about two weeks after that, as the moon is new, it will partially eclipse the sun. This is mostly an event for the United States and Canada, it takes place October 23rd. Top stories today are weather related. Super Typhoon found phone with the penumbral earth spot lines visible pointing in towards the earth spot umbra, commonly called the eye. This thing is a beast. Super Typhoons are among the deadliest forces on earth and it looks like he's drawing a crowd. After Fan Phone sideswipes Japan, Vong Fong will be right in its weight waiting to do the same. Meanwhile, Simon will be an equally significant concern for Baja and the U.S. Southwest. Most models agree that this thing will swing back northeast and will likely bring even more of those bad floods to the U.S. Southwest. Meanwhile, I'll ask that you recall yesterday's discussion about hot and cold and highs and lows and convergences reinforced. The spin to the wind is how you get something like this 24-hour temperature change in the United States. This is precisely what can be expected during these climate extreme events. Light blue, blue, and navy, all frost or freeze alerts. They are as significant today as the east coast storm warnings. Meanwhile, the convergence has only shifted slightly from Europe's previous alerts. Darkest purple is the strongest flood and wind alerts tonight, especially wind. Down under, a small low will take hold in the eastern part of Australia while that same moisture flow is atop New Zealand. Can't really avoid it. Folks, in today's Fly on the Wall episode, we plan to discuss solar radiation management, aka chemtrails, the long-term weather changes coming to different parts of the globe, and the latest on Comet Siding Spring coming to Mars in just two weeks. If you're not yet a member, it's only $3 a month or $20 if you get a full year. We greatly appreciate your support. Helio Viewer is still lagging, so we're on the SDO site for shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.